Welcome everyone to my latest Star Wars book review where I will finally be wrapping up the new Jedi Order series. A uh, series of reviews that I started way back in January of 2018. So it took a while, took almost a year and a half, but I made it and it's time to wrap up the new Jedi Order series. And I apologize for the slight delay in this video. It was supposed to go up last night, but I ran into a problem with, uh, you know, paying my mortgage. Uh, the auto pay system wasn't working properly and I wanted to make sure my payment got in. So. Yeah, owning a home is fun and not stressful at all, said no one. But we've got six more books to go with the new Jedi Order series, and I'm going to wrap them up right here for you. Uh, we left off with Traitor, which was the book where Jason Solo escaped captivity from the Yuuzhan Vong, and now we're going to go into the final stretch of books to close out the series. A 19-book series. Good Lord, that's a, that is a lot of books. Um, and... Be forewarned, there will be spoilers in this. You almost can't talk about these books without talking about spoilers to some degree. Um, so you've been warned. But first book is Destiny's Way, written by Walter John Williams, a science fiction writer. Uh, then we get a bit of a trilogy uh, written by Sean Williams and Shane Dix, the writing duo. Uh, Force Heretic Part 1, Remnant. Force Heretic Part 2, Refugee. Force Heretic Part 3, Reunion. I like the title Force Heretic. That just sounds really ominous and, and cool. Uh, and then from there we get the penultimate entry in the series, written by Greg Keyes, who previously wrote Edge of Victories Parts 1 and 2 in this same series. Uh, the Final Prophecy. And then finally we get the Grand Conclusion with the Unifying Force, another great title, uh, written by James Lucino, who those of you who followed my reviews may remember that he was the writer for um, Labyrinth of Evil and The Rise of Darth Vader, two-thirds of the Dark Lord trilogy. The third entry being Revenge of the Sith novelization. So, um, those are the final books in the New Jedi Order series. And I'm not going to go into them individually and break them down that way because really this, I feel like these last six books were all one storyline kind of building off on top of the other. And, um... I guess I'll go ahead and get the negative out of the way. I don't want to sound like a negative Nelly right off the bat, but something about these books just didn't quite work for me as well as some of the other ones did. Now, Star by Star, I thought, was like the Empire Strikes Back of the series, right? And then the two books that followed were uh, nice character-driven follow-ups to it, focusing on Jaina and Jason Solo. And I thought, all right, everything's building up. We're going to get like this really great grand climax out of it. And unfortunately, I felt like uh, for a majority of these books, they were kind of just meandering around and um, weren't kind of getting to the point as quickly as they needed to and not upping the stakes. Whereas, like, you look at the first, um, you know, uh, first 13 books or so, um, everything is just building and building and building and things just keep getting worse and worse and worse for the Republic. And then things just kind of stagnate a little bit and it never reaches that kind of... It feels like uh, the last book was kind of their Return of the Jedi, and then they spent five books before that to set everything up for the final book. And it, it's a lot of setting up and foreshadowing, not a lot of moving the plot forward, if that makes any sense. Uh, some great character development, I will say that. Um, some of the characters really get to shine here. Um, uh, Grand Admiral Pelion, um, you know, the Imperial Remnant, and what's left of the Imperial Forces had forged an alliance with... Uh, what's at this point what's left of the Republic and I think Pelion has some legitimately great moments um, especially in the Force Heretic trilogy and comes across really well and it's uh, you know it's, it was so great to see a character that showed up in the Thrawn trilogy way back when uh, get such a spotlight put on him and do so well and now I basically at this point be counted as one of the good guys uh, we get to see Admiral uh, Akbar's final acts as an admiral admiral he's uh, retired at this point ultimately dies um, again, spoilers, but uh, it's nice to see Admiral Akbar get into the action just one last time. Um, we get to see Jaina uh, come into her own as a fighter and a pilot in the war as a Jedi. Jason uh, and his understandings of the Force um, comes to a head by the end of the, the final book. And he gets a major victory along the way as well. And uh, just a lot of really good stuff going on. I think the character that probably turned out the best was Yuuzhan Vong character, uh, Nam Anor, who uh, really goes all the way back to the first book in the series, Vector Prime. Uh, he has a falling out with the Yuuzhan Vong uh, Shimra, uh, the, the ultimate overlord of, of the Yuuzhan Vong. He has a falling out over a poor decision that he made, uh, resulting in a battle that went very poorly for the Vong. And he gets ostracized, but ultimately joins up with the uh, the shamed ones, 
uh, who are like the ostracized people in the Bong society who are deformed and, and not considered part of the elite. And he ends up being like a religious spiritual leader for those people, predicting that the Jedi is going to save everyone. And uh, it's him kind of manipulating his way back into power and uh, kind of playing all sides against each other to ultimately benefit himself. And a very like slimy, manipulative, and interesting character. And uh, for some reason, while I was reading the books, the image I had in my head was the the Skeksis Chamberlain from The Dark Crystal, for those of you who remember that Jim Henson classic film. And just kind of like this sniveling weasel that uh, manipulates every situation to benefit himself and becomes this false prophet, uh, but also ultimately uses his position to almost uh, royally screw over um, the good guys. And they actually, let me pull up my notes here. I want to make sure I get this right, because at some point, uh, the Republic starts to rebuild itself. They establish a new government in Mon Calamari, and uh, they actually rename their government uh, away from the, the Republic, and they call it, I have the name pulled, the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, or the Galactic Alliance for short. And uh, Luke finally sets up a new Jedi Council and ultimately decides that the Jedi don't need to be the police of the galaxy, but rather like spiritual leaders and moral leaders and um, take a less hands-on approach than the Jedi Council did uh, back in, say, the prequel trilogy. So it's very interesting to see finally we get a payoff. Luke finally establishes a Jedi Council and the New Jedi Order, uh, as the title of the series suggests. Uh, so we do get a lot of payoffs there uh, for many of the characters. I think all of that is really well done. I just wish that there was more urgency in the story to kind of get things moving forward because it felt like everything was just kind of staying stagnant. Um, and I guess the big development in the story that's worth mentioning is that um, what takes up a good part of uh, especially the Force Heretic trilogy, those three books, is the search for Zonema Sikat, which is a legendary sentient planet that is, uh, according to legend, had fought off the Yuuzhan Vong once before. And Luke uh, plans to lead the Jedi on a mission. He takes Mara with him, he takes Jason with him, and a few others. And uh, they plan to speak to this living planet and enlist it to help them against the Yuuzhan Vong and ultimately win the war. A very odd ally for the Jedi, and it's something that I kind of wish had like been done in one of the movies. Oh, a living planet. They have never done that before in any of the movies. That would have been interesting. Um, I, I mean, I guess if the Green Lantern Corps can have a living planet on their team, I guess the Jedi can too, right? Uh, so that was a very interesting concept. I don't know if you needed three books to search for it and find it and speak to it. And actually, and I, this I won't spoil, but... The way that Sekot communicates with Luke and the other Jedi is very interesting and uh, made for a lot of fun reading as well. Uh, some interesting stuff there. Uh, but again, don't want to spoil it. Uh, I can't spoil everything. Come on. we got to keep this review as basic as possible. But, uh, yeah, I, really, so I'm kind of torn on these books. They're not terrible by any means. Uh, I don't think any of the books, out of 19, I don't think any of them were terrible. Um... I just think that these last six, there's just not a lot of urgency to kind of get everything uh, underway. Uh, whereas the first 13, 14 books or so, um, the Yuuzhan Vong represent like this huge threat that's taking everything away from the Republic. They kill Chewie, they kill Anakin, uh, Anakin Solo, I should say. Uh, they take Coruscant away and terraform it as, into their own uh, home world, basically. And, uh, you know, Corrin Horn is ultimately exiled. They just keep losing and losing and losing. Mara, they make Mara Jade sick, and uh, they have to overcome that. Uh, there's a lot of, like, bad stuff going on. And here, um, these last few books, it just kind of feels like they're just getting ready to wrap everything up, and they're just kind of putting the pieces in place to wrap everything up. And that's fine. I don't know if you needed six books to do that. I think you could probably, uh, you know, I'm looking at the stack right here. Ugh. Put them all you could probably have cut this down in half, probably. Uh, maybe even go down as far as two books. Uh, I didn't really need six, but uh, I guess you could say I'm nitpicking. But uh, as it is, though, um, like I said, there is a lot of really good character work and character development going into play. I thought Pelion was a shining star in this. I thought, um, uh, you know, Han, Luke, and Leia are great as always. Lando gets to play a little bit of a role as well. Um, C-3PO and R2-D2 uh, get a couple hero moments in there, which is nice. And um, when the Republic ultimately wins, or I guess I should call them the, the uh, let me 
pull that, the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, uh, when they ultimately win, it is satisfying. And actually, I think of all of them, I think uh, the Unifying Force is the best book of the, the final six. Um, it is a satisfying conclusion. You do get all the payoffs. But, um, yeah, it just took a while to get there, if that makes any sense. But again, it's like, I like being in that world, and I like spending time with some of those characters, like Mara Jade, like Pelion, like even the Yuzhan Vong, um, I thought represented uh, very interesting um, characters, mainly Nam Enor, who's, again, such a delightfully devilish and manipulative character. Uh, one that I would have also liked to have seen in a film. And I guess overall, talking about the new Jedi Order series, um, it made me realize while I was reading it that um, while I support Disney's decision to render the expanded universe non-canon because, uh, you know, any director that goes into directing a new Star, Star Wars movie, I think should be able to start with as much of a clean slate as possible because no human being should be expected to fit everything into this massive canon. Like, the new Jedi Order series alone is 19 books, and trying to keep up with all of that it's crazy, and um, I would never expect a filmmaker to um, keep up with that massive, massive canon. Um, I'm sure that I could probably think of examples where the canon, uh, the expanded universe, contradicts itself. Um, because there's just so much material to keep track of. But um, what I wish Disney had done instead, and they're starting to incorporate a few more elements, uh, like Grand Admiral Thrawn, for example, had his great return. But I, I wish they hadn't thrown out the baby with the bathwater. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, this is purely hindsight. And I don't hate episode 7, 8, and I'm probably going to enjoy 9 just fine. But it's, um, uh, I, I feel like that there was a treasure trove of material that they could have borrowed and pulled from. And they could have adapted some of that for the movies. Like, I think um, if they were going to do this new trilogy, instead of doing an Empire rehash, why not do the Yuzhan Vong? I think it's a completely original, completely different villain than has ever been seen in any Star Wars movie. Um, with the organic technology and their uh, more warrior-like stances, it would have been a complete break from the Empire and the droid armies that you saw in the prequel trilogy. So I, I think it would have been very interesting to see. And, you know, characters like C-3PO and R2-D2 are like in double trouble because they hate droids and see them as like this aberration that needs to be wiped out and eliminated. I guess you could uh, play with, like, racial discrimination at that point where they uh, don't value the droids as anything other than um, sacrilegious, basically. So uh, they probably could have done a bunch of stuff with that and maybe do, like, a truncated, shortened version of the New Jedi Order series uh, over the course of a new trilogy. Uh, that's one way they could have gone about it. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of elements in the Expanded Universe. Uh, not just the Yuzhan Vong, but, you know, I've talked about it before, like Prince Jizor, the Black Sun, and, and Thrawn, and um, the Solo Twins, and, and various other elements to these books that could have easily been incorporated into a film and probably could have worked really, really well. Instead, they just kind of decided to go in their own direction, which started with kind of a rehash of A New Hope, and it kind of... Um, and clearly they didn't have everything mapped out because you saw episode 8. Ryan Johnson basically undid a lot of what J.J. Abrams was setting up. And now with episode 9, it looks like J.J. Abrams is trying to undo what Ryan Johnson did. And it's basically just two nerds like slap fighting each other uh, over the course of cinema. But, uh, you know, maybe if they had taken a little bit more time to map this out and maybe decided, you know, hey, we've got all these books here. We've got a wealth of material to pull from. Maybe we should just pull from it and it, again it's no longer canon so that gives us even more freedom to kind of do what we want with these concepts um i remember hearing when they were going to do a kenobi movie my first response was it's like just adapt the book like literally it's one of the better star wars books out there just adapt the kenobi book you're fine and i guarantee you that's not what they would have done um because it's like no it's not canon anymore it's like yeah but it's not canon anymore so you can kind of still put it back into canon and make it your own thing and maybe change a couple of things to make it more movieable um, so, uh, that's just kind of my take on it. Uh, but again, going back to the New Jedi Order books, uh, specifically these last six, like I said, um, 19 books is a lot, and expecting anybody to read 19 books, uh, on my recommendation is kind of crazy, but I'm going to recommend that you guys check out the New Jedi Order series overall. Um, there's not a bad book in the set, uh, it does slow down and the pace slows down, uh, towards the end, but it comes through with a very satisfying conclusion. And, uh, you know, I hadn't mentioned this before, but there are also interesting themes on 
how the Republic is going to deal with the Yuzhan Vong. They develop a, a weapon called the Alpha Red, uh, which would basically annihilate them. And there's debates and uh, moral quandaries about whether or not it's right to basically commit genocide to get rid of this grand threat that's been uh, tearing the galaxy apart. So a uh, bunch of interesting ideas, interesting themes. There's one character who um, it basically has her personality split into two, Tahiri, who is a good friend of Anakin Solo's. And she becomes like half Jedi, half Vong, and she has to kind of reconcile those two parts of herself in her mind. And it's like, that's really interesting. That's a solid concept. So um, there's a lot of interesting things in play and a lot of uh, really good ideas and, and good stories. Again, I wish that the, the last six books had kind of maybe moved the story forward. But I guess once Coruscant falls, it's like... How much bigger can you go other than that, you know? Um, I mean, that's uh, the, Re uh, the Republic can't lose much more uh, beyond that. And, you know, you killed a fan favorite in Chewie. You killed one of the kid characters in Anakin, uh, although I guess technically he wasn't a kid at this point, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, he's one of the ones I would have thought, oh, they're not going to kill the youngest solo kid. Oh, my God, they did. What? That's insane. But, um, you know, uh, they, I think this is a really strong set of... Uh, of books for the most part uh, but again it is um it is very long and i didn't even cover everything because there's also short stories that took place during this time period as well that i i didn't even read those uh except for the one that was put in front of star by star my copy of star by star and um uh, but so if you are going to dive into the new jedi order keep in mind it is quite the commitment it took me a year and a half to kind of get through everything uh you know trying to balance life and work and buying a home and various other things kind of gets in the way of reading and getting through 19 books it, it took quite a while but i i did it i got through it now i've reviewed them all yay it's great so yeah that's uh basically my feelings of the new jedi order series i think it's a very noble and creative attempt to do something really epic and different with the star wars um universe it isn't entirely successful it's not perfect but it has a lot of really big moments and really cool ideas, and when it delivers, it really does deliver. I, I would put Vector Prime and Star by Star up there as some of the better Star Wars Expanded Universe books out there. Um, you know, some of them, like I said, towards the end, like some of them just kind of feel like filler and build up to get to the final book. But uh, if you're willing to get through all that and willing to kind of immerse yourself in the Star Wars universe for a very long period of time... Check out the New Jedi Order series, and uh, if you decide to start reading them and you want to read all 19 books, more power to you because you're going to be in for the long haul and you're going to be reading these things for quite a while. But, uh, yeah, that, so that finally concludes the New Jedi Order series. We are all done with that series of books, but uh, I am not done with my Star Wars book reviews, not yet by a long shot. I've got more to do, and later this month in May, towards the end of the month, I will have my next review up, so be on the lookout for that. But... That is all I have for you now. Thank you all for listening and watching. And hey, May the 4th is coming up, so that's Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with, with the blah, 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 porky pig. Uh, <laughs> May the force be with you all on May the 4th. There we go. I got it out. Uh, but that's it. I'm done. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And uh, stay tuned for more because I'll have more Star Wars-related material up for you in future videos, so don't go away.